Okay, so we've learned a little bit about Mendel. Uh, we know that he used pea plants to determine traits and alleles and find out what was dominant and recessive and how that plays out. But now we're going to take that a step further and we're going to look at how the things Mendel taught us can be used to determine inheritance and human disease. Okay? So, basically genetic disorders are medical conditions caused by alleles that are inherited from our parents. Anything that is called autosome, an autosome or an autosomal disorder, that means that it's on a chromosome that is not a sex chromosome. So it is not associated with the X or the Y chromosomes. Okay, that is a different type. That is, we're going to get into that in a minute. But basically, autosomal just means it's one of the other 22 pairs of chromosomes. Okay, you have 23 pairs of chromosomes in your body for a total of 46. Two of those, or one pair, are sex chromosomes, either an XX, XY, um, and then the other 22 pairs, or 44, are autosomes. And they deal with everything else in your body. So, Genetic disorders caused by genes on autosomes are called autosomal disorder. It depends, you can be autosomal dominant or autosomal recessive, okay? We already know what those terms mean. So here it's showing you, if you have an autosomal dominant disorder and you have two big A's, you have the disorder. Even if you're heterozygous, you have the disorder because it is dominant, meaning one big A gives you the disease. Only someone who is recessive, carrying two small A's, would not display the disorder. Now if you are autosomal recessive, if we're talking about a genetic disorder that's autosomal recessive, it's kind of the opposite. So two big A's does not have it, the heterozygous person does not have it, but they're what we call a carrier, meaning they have it in their system, but they are not expressing it. And then the person who has the two small a's or is recessive for the disorder actually has it. Okay, so there is a difference how these things are displayed if they are autosomal dominant or autosomal recessive. So, here is a little pedigree showing how an autosomal recessive trait would move down the line. Okay? So many times autosomal recessive disorders will pop up and you don't even know that you had it, which is what it says here in the blue box. Most effective ch affected children actually have parents that are not affected, meaning Maybe they're just carriers, so they may have the small a, but they're not affected by it, and then their mate also is heterozygous and has the small a, but is not affected by it, and they randomly got together, and now they have a child with the two small a's, okay? And this can be mapped out in a Punnett square, just like the pea plants. So if you know that you are a carrier for some disease and you know that your mate is also a carrier for a disease, you can actually do a Punnett square and figure out the probability of you having a child with this disorder. It's, there's no tricks to it. It's, very, it's just math. It's, it's all the same. Okay. And when we're talking about autosomal disorders, it doesn't matter if you're a male or a female because it has nothing to do with the sex chromosomes. So, for instance, cystic fibrosis is an autosomal recessive disorder, and that affects males and females in the same amount, um, in the same probability, because it is not linked to an X or a Y chromosomes. Okay? This is showing, uh, this is kind of just giving you a few more facts about the autosomal dominant disorder. Um, this is like the opposite, like we said. So usually if, if a child has it, you probably have a parent that has it as well. 
And remember, in this case, the heterozygotes do actually have the disease. Okay, but two people can produce an unaffected child, and that is like exactly the opposite of what we just said, because now you have two heterozygotes that might get together. They're both affected. They both know that they have it, but a quarter of their children are going to end up with two little A's and not be affected because it's the big A that's going to make you have it in this case. Okay, and again, uh, males and females affected the same with this because it is autosomal. Okay, so if both parents carry one copy of a recessive gene, they are unaffected, right? But they are capable of having a child with two copies of the gene that would then be affected. And this, is a, this happens in cystic fibrosis. So basically, if you have a mom and a dad, or a male and a female, um, and they are both big A, little a, let's say, and they get together, that Punnett square is going to look like two, you're going to have 25% big A, big A, which would not have it. You're going to have 50% big A, little a, meaning they, the children would be a carrier, and there's going to be that bottom right square of little a, little a, 25%, that has the disease. Okay? Uh, cystic fibrosis is a problem that um, basically you get a lot of mucus uh, in your bronchial tubes and your pancreatic ducts and your body doesn't filter through the mucus like it should. Um, and it becomes very thick and it causes coughing. Um, it can cause um, almost suffocation. And depending if it's, you know, how it's treated and how bad it is, it, it, can, it can kill you and it um, can kill small children. So um, probably one of the most famous autosomal recessive disorders. Whenever you talk about autosomal recessive, you kind of hear about cystic fibrosis. Okay, so then we have these autosomal dominant patterns, uh, which we've already discussed. And here are two examples of that. Um, osteogenesis imperfecta, which is brittle bones, um, and this is caused by a mutation in the genes that are required for the synthesis of type 1 collagen. Collagen is like an elastic type of fiber, and you need that in your bones to kind of give them the ability to absorb shock and to be a little bit flexible. So if you don't have that, you would have brittle bones. And then there is this um, hereditary serohero Therocytosis. Um, this one is caused by a mutation in an exact gene, the Ankerin 1 gene, and this uh, is a problem because the red blood cells become spherical, um, not conical as we see them usually, and fragile, and they burst easy, which obviously would not be good for carrying oxygen. Okay, so this one's more of a blood disorder. Okay, some traits are controlled by multiple alleles. So some things aren't just big T, little t. Some things aren't that easy, okay? So um, one of these examples is a blood type. So blood type gets a little tricky because we have A blood type, we have B blood type, we have AB, and we have O. Okay, so there are four types of blood. Then you throw in a positive or a negative, which is the RIH factor, and you could have eight different types all together when you are taking in the RH factor, okay? So you can be A negative, you can be A positive, you can be B negative, B positive, and so on down the line. Blood type is something that explain, um, expresses itself in what we call codominance. And that means that the A and the B are as strong as each other. So you can either be A or B blood, or you can be AB. B 
because they are co-dominant. One does not override the other. And then we have O, which is actually like considered recessive. Okay. Here it's showing you um, those are the phenotypes, right? Those four types of blood and the genotypes are shown here on the right. You can either have two A's or an A and an O and your A will override the O because A is dominant. So the A and B phenotype each have two different genotypes that you could be. AB has to be AB and O has to be the two recessive O's. I think it's so cool. I love blood types. It seems kind of tricky at first. It might like be like, what is happening? But the more you look at it, it's very, it's very clear and it's always the same. So once you figure out how to use these in like a Punnett square, you can figure out the possibilities of children you could have depending on your mate. And it always works out that way. Um, there are no, um, there's no tricks. So, you know, you could, you could even learn maybe that <laughs> um, maybe the child isn't yours, right? Like there's always those questions in the book about a father is this and a mother is this and their child is this, you know, can, it, can this be their kid? And sometimes the answer is no, because those blood types don't make that. So once you know a little bit about blood types, you can investigate all kinds of things. Okay, so, um, as we have co-dominance, we also have something called incomplete dominance, which means that the heterozygote has a phenotype that's kind of an intermediate in between the other two, in between the dominant and the recessive. And we see this in some plants. So in some plants, the homozygous is red, um, the phenotype is red, whereas the homozygous white would be white, but then the heterozygous is in between and it actually becomes a pink or an intermediate. So codominance is when they are sharing the dominance and incomplete dominance is when there is an intermediate in between the homozygous dominant and the homozygous recessive. So this is showing you that um, in this flower type here, the red is dominant, it's the big R1, uh, the white is the, the big R2, and then if you get a mix of those, you get this in-between hybrid, um, this intermediate that is pink. Okay, so here is an example um, of incomplete dominance in humans. Um, this is called FH. And this happens when the heterozygotes for the mutant allele develop fatty deposits in the skin and tendons, and this can trigger heart attacks um, in childhood. Heterozygotes kind of have an, an in-between problem, um, and they might be able to live until adulthood, and then the homozygotes um, have no disorder. So it's an, you have this intermediate, instead of just having it or not, you have it, but you might live a little bit longer. Okay, and then there are things that are sex linked, so not autosomal, okay? So we do have sex chromosomes. You have either an XX or an XY. And some disorders travel on these chromosomes meaning they are linked to whether you are female or male. And whether you are female or male, it may be more prevalent because like we said, females have two X's. So if you have a bad X, you might be able to mask it and still you know, be okay. But males only have one X. So usually if they have a mutant X, they're going to display the disorder. Okay, so let's look at that. So, X-linked genes are carried on the X chromosome. This has nothing to do with the Y. 
okay? So this is what I was just explaining. So since females have two X's, if I have a bad X for colorblindness, I might be able to mask that with my good X. That means I carry a bad X that I could pass down, but I'm not colorblind. But there'll be a percent of my children who could be. And if I give my bad X to my son and he gets a good Y from his father, that's fine, but the Y can't mask the X. So because I had a bad X, my son will be colorblind. Okay? So again, these type of things travel according to sex, if you will, according to gender. Okay, so here are some X-linked recessive disorders. Meaning, if a woman, if a female has, okay, they have two X's, if one of them is bad, we would just probably be a carrier for these items. We would not necessarily display the disorder. But if we transfer that bad X to our son, he's going to display the disorder because he only has one X. So it's, you know, out there. Does that make sense? So here are some, a list of different disorders. Color blindness, Menke's syndrome, muscular dystrophy, um, adrenaline leudytrophy. That is a, wow, that's a mouthful. And hemophilia, which is a blood clotting disorder. So, although a woman could be colorblind, it happens, it is possible, but the probability is very low, whereas the probability of a man being colorblind is much higher. Okay, so any sex-linked recessive disorder is going to be seen in men much more than in females. Okay? And that's just how it goes. So hemophilia, which is one of these, um, it's just, this is just kind of an interesting fact. Uh, the royal families of Europe, the, if you're a hemophilia, uh, hemophiliac, you literally don't produce, let me, let me go back just a minute, you don't produce one of the clotting factors that you need to basically stop bleeding. So if you cut yourself, or if you are in some type of accident and you are internally bleeding, unfortunately your body doesn't have the ability to stop that bleeding. And you will hemorrhage, usually to death. So um, back, in, back in the day, I guess, um, hemophilia was called the royal disease. And that is because um, people used to intermarry a lot. There were arranged marriages and this allele kind of went through um, society according to these intermarriages, if that makes sense. So um, there were several people back in um, history of Europe that were considered bleeders, meaning they had hemophilia. And that is because the recessive allele was popping out much more frequently because people were interbreeding, meaning maybe an uncle and a cousin or a, you know, like you were, it was all kind of within the family. Whereas in our society, you usually don't um, procreate with someone that's in your family. So the probability of passing down a disorder of any kind is slim because it's a random pool of genes that you're, you're getting. But if, if a family has a certain disorder and if people in that family interbreed, obviously that disorder would have a higher probability of popping out. Does that make sense? So anyways, that is what this last slide here about hemophilia is talking about. Um, very true and kind of a you know, a real life story about how these traits can travel through generations and families because even if it's recessive, 
if the gene pool is small, it's going to pop out a lot more. Okay, so that was a lot of information. Uh, look it over. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, just main points, remember that autosomes are non-sex chromosomes. They're all the other ones. And then you have these X-linked diseases. Okay? Have a beautiful day, and I hope you enjoyed it. I really do love genetics, so hopefully you found it enjoyable. Take care.